Well, basically what, what happened um, about seven years ago, my third and, and youngest child was born with a extremely rare genetic condition. It's called lysencephaly. Um, there's about 700 cases worldwide usually at any given time um, that are children that have this type of condition. It's also known as smooth brain. So the outside of her brain is completely smooth. It did not develop all the way in utero due to a genetic link. She's missing a deletion or succeed chromosome. Um, so what, what is entailed when you're dealing with a traumatic brain injury, such as what my daughter has, they call it a TBI injury, even though it is a genetic condition, because um, she's missing a large portion of the brain, is epilepsy, and not just any type of epilepsy, intractable epilepsy. And in her particular case, uh, if, if people understand epilepsy, intractable basically gives you, the way you get the diagnosis of intractable epilepsy is if you failed three anti-epileptic drugs and none of them can stop the seizures from occurring, then you get the diagnosis of intractable, meaning that there's the chances of you actually having a pharmaceutical medicine that would give any type of control over, um, over, those, uh, over the seizures from actually occurring, it drops to about under 5% after the third pharmaceutical. Um, so your chances are pretty much next to nothing. We had pretty decent control when she was real little through a steroid injection called ACTH. We had to do a 32-day course of treatments. We did it three times. So what happened was after we had lost seizure control and we did the third round of ACTH injections, we ended up going down the pharmaceutical route with the drugs. And it was not something I would ever want to go back to. Basically, we were on five high levels of anti-epileptic drugs. We were giving emergency medicine at least once every two to three days to try to stop the seizure. She was still having hundreds of seizures a day. We were, when she was three and a half, almost four, we spent four days in the hospital where she was in complete status. And basically at the time, the doctors told us there was nothing else that they could do. They were pretty much out of options at that point, and they were um, having us talk about hospice and, and what we were going to be looking for in the near future. That's when I started researching cannabis. I didn't want to get into this. I was actually a photojournalist before this. So after the legislation passed, we attempted to try to get the CBD and what we, or this oil, this amazing oil that was helping all these children out in Colorado, well, in California, well, what we found out is we couldn't get it. I, at several different occasions, um, I was stolen from me and a group of parents, had a lot of money taken from us. We were way overcharged for products that weren't even fit for human consumption, were grossly mislabeled. That was it for me. That's when I decided that I'm getting into this industry and if I'm going to get this for my daughter and I know it's what she needs because I did actually get about a two week supply during all this mess and she, she instantly responded to it and the seizure started to curb almost immediately. So I knew it was what she needed and now it was just a matter of getting a consistent, safe, tested supply. And I felt in order for me to do that, I was going to have to get into this industry to do it. So, and that's, that was my first step into the industry.